It also doesn't help that we was intimate up to like a week and a half ago, but <laughs> Listen, it's the message right here Black boy, tell me how you really feel Cause I just wanna build with you Black girl, tell me how you really feel I wanna keep it real with you I wanna live better, eat better I wanna love better, sleep better Yeah, I wanna um, So when he broke up with me And packed me up And put me back in my mama's house Like he found me Um <laughs> It kind of lit a fire under my ass because I'm like, hmm. Hmm. Like, <laughs> I just had to analyze, like, what went wrong? Like, what? And I had to be honest with myself. And that was when, thankfully, I don't know if it was God or what, but it's like that's when I got into the manosphere heavy. Mm. And everything that they were speaking on or a lot of the things that they were speaking on, it's like, Oh. <laughs> oh, okay, oh, all right, okay. So this is how men think, and this is what they expect, and this is what they expect from us, and this is what we're not doing, and this is how we're coming off, and this is, you know, so. Needless to say, I made a lot of life changes, and still am. Um, but one of the biggest things for me was I felt like my physical insecurities was my own personal problem. And if I didn't start working on that in my body, then I was just going to carry that with every guy that I dated. Um, so I had to lose weight. Like I was like 190 at my heaviest. I went to the doctor and I thought I was 185. And the lady put me on the scale and I don't know why I was surprised. She was like, you're... um." I came up to 189, and I don't know why that was so surprising for me when I already expected to hear 185, but that was huge. <laughs> because I'm only like 5'4", so 190 pounds, 5'4", like, I, it just, it wasn't, mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> caused a lot of problems. I like, just, I wasn't feeling myself. And um, now listen, I did get that surgery. I did get that BBL, but I lost weight before. And um, I also changed a lot of my habits, like diet-wise. There's a lot of things that I don't eat that I used to eat now. Um, cut out the alcohol, mostly. Um, and I work out almost every day now, so. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> So it doesn't help that <laughs> once I had made all these changes, I'm like, okay, I'm ready for them now. <laughs> so I hit him up, right? And <sighs> this is where it gets, this is where it gets juicy, Alan. This is where it gets juicy. I hit him up around the summer-ish of last year, around June, July of last year. And I thought he wasn't really going to be messing with me because I swore he was just done with me up and down. But I told him I got a BBL. <laughs> 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 that's why, that's why like, I got like, let me see. That's why I got back in the door. <laughs> so let me see. <laughs> I had to keep that door, I had to keep that door now. And um, yeah, he started messing with me again. And we spent the entire summer, you know, together, how we were in the beginning. Alan, this man didn't tell me he was in a relationship the entire time. The entire time. Alan, this man didn't tell me that he had gotten married. He went to the courthouse at the end of last year and they had a ceremony this year. So I'm thinking like, okay, I done got myself together. I, I, I did my big one. I did everything I was supposed to do. I got right. Like, I, I was wondering why he was holding back so much. Like, what was wrong? Like, why, you know? And, and then the female intuition kicked in. And I'm like, it seemed like every other time he talking to me on the phone, he's just getting in his car. 
or you know like he's always on the go or something which is like an indicator that he can't be in the house talking for a reason like I, somebody can't know who he's talking to um and there was just a lot of things that just didn't make sense and um one day he just finally like just told me, just came out and just said everything. Well, he didn't tell me the, he still didn't tell me the truth. He told me, he didn't tell me that like he had moved on and was like married and had found somebody he wanted to be with. He told me that since he was in the military, you know, they get paid to be married. He told me that he had an arrangement with the woman that he married. Um, and the arrangement was he would get money out of the marriage and she would have a companion. Like he just tried to play it off. Like he made her seem like she was like this older woman that just, cause I think she's a little bit older than him, but this older woman that just needed a companion and just needed a guy around. And I mean, it makes sense, but I have no proof until one day I had just called his mom <laughs> and she told me everything. Damn, his mom snitched on him. <laughs> his mom snitched hey. on him. But that that was hard, and that was heartbreaking, and you know, it also doesn't help that we was intimate up to like a week and a half ago. But <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um. <laughs> So yeah, military guys. Shout out to the uh, to the army. <laughs> Shout right. out to the army. All right, let's talk about um, your BBL. I like talking about this. Okay, so first of all, let, let's 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 make it very elementary. Explain what a BBL is, and then explain why you decided to get one done, and what your life was before, and then now after. A BBL is a Brazilian butt lift. It's a plastic surgery procedure that involves taking the fat um, cells from one part of your body and removing them and implanting them into your butt. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's been around since like the 70s. That was like when it first was invented, but it's gotten better and better with time because it's gotten more and more popular since being thick is in. Um, simply put, the reason why I, I knew I was going to get one was because I was straight legs up back. Like, I had nothing. I had nothing. And I just don't think that was fair. <laughs> I don't think that was fair. God could have just gave me a little teeny tiny little something, but I had nothing. And I'm like, I'm not living this life with a flat ass. I'm not doing it. Life's too short. Life's too short for me to just be on pancake. <laughs> and so I was like, I got all this stomach. I ain't using it anyway. So I might as well just go ahead and just put it where it really needs to be. So it wasn't like a spur of the moment thing and it wasn't spontaneous either. I had been researching BBL since I was like 13. 13? Wow. Um, back then, they weren't as popular. Back then, I think girls was getting like implants and stuff. Which I was really skinny back then, so I thought when I get older, like that's what I'm gonna do. Which thank God it didn't work out that way. But um, as I got older and older, it just and then life just it's your peers just don't help. Like it just didn't help to just constantly be reminded that I had no ass. So mm. you know, I'm what, like, what, do you, what, what do you mean? School guys let you know what they like and what you what you don't got. Um, and it's like, I always had the boobs. So people just naturally expecting you to have the complete package, but it seems like it's always the other way around. Like typically girls with boobs don't have butt, girls with butts don't have boobs. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna fix it myself. So, and I, I just, I was kind of sort of a little bit obsessive about it. Um, and then once I finally got into adulthood, I was like, I'm going to find a way to make this happen. Um, I think they get a bad rep, honestly, because of all the bad press surrounding them, which is understandable. 
But I don't think a lot of people really look into like, like there's a lot of, um, if I'm not mistaken, the death rate for VBL is like one in every 3,000 or something. But a lot of people don't look into a lot of the cases that go viral for women that die. Um, In most instances, women that die typically have lied to their doctors about their medical history or they went out of the country to try to get it done, which once you do that, it's it's 50-50 because you don't have the protection of the United States and you go to another country and you don't speak the language, you don't know what they're doing to you. Yeah. So a lot of women are trying to be cheap, go the easy route. Um, it's not, I don't think people go to the DR really even to be cheap anymore because you can get a BBL um, in like Atlanta or Miami for the same price you could go in the DR. I think it's the fact that in the DR, they just do it. It's going to sound messed up, but they do it in a more dangerous manner. Um, like there's only so much that you can put back there at one time. <laughs> and the, I don't think... Um, and the DR they have is strict regulations. Like they don't, they pretty much in a lot of instances, anything goes with certain doctors. So a lot of them are going to to take the dangerous route because they want that vixen body. Um, and a lot of women that die typically lie to their doctors about their medical history. Like you have to get clearing in so many different ways before you can even, you know, if you go to a reputable doctor, like a good doctor. You have to get so much clearing before you can actually get it done. So a lot of them can bypass that by going to the DR. Or if they go to doctors in the U.S. that's constantly telling them no because of their health, they can go to a doctor overseas that might tell them yeah because they don't care. They want the money. So, I mean, you could be perfectly healthy and still die. Something could still go wrong. But you could really, really minimize the chances of complications if you do what you're supposed to do. And that's why I didn't go out to rush and do anything because I wanted to make sure that if I was going to do it, I was going to do it right. And in the best way possible. Um, and honestly, I like I don't have anything bad to say about my experience. I went to Miami. Um, this doctor named Daniel Kaufman, and everything was great for me. Um, I made sure that I saved up so that I could get everything that I needed. That's what I was going to ask. How did you afford it? Because you're young. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, <laughs> listen, this shit ain't get a butt on layaway now. <laughs> You can get a butt on installments. Like, you, you can put a down payment on a booty. Like, you can put a down payment on a car. Wow. <laughs> so, people think that you just this big, big bucks because you got to be. No. <laughs> and then there's also, um, if you work on your credit score, like, I had relatively, I, I wasn't at like 750, 800, but I had decent credit um, in my youth because I didn't do anything with it specifically for this purpose. And I got approved for a care credit card, which was how I was able to pay for it. Um, I also I just wanted to make sure that I did everything right because I didn't want anything to go wrong on my own doing um, I also had a private nurse take care of me for the first few days so that you know I could really be sure that I would be okay and I don't regret anything about that decision because when I tell you my life changed like day and night changed <sighs> talk about it what 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 do you mean my life changed explain break it down all the way for me i'm a dude yeah <laughs> break it down one it's just the confidence i never had like i've never been an unattractive girl but <laughs> i never had what i felt like would complete me and even if I, people say go to the gym, go to the gym, go to the gym. I'm telling you, I had straight legs up back. I could have did squats all I wanted to. I wasn't even fat. I just had a little pudge. I was overweight, but I wasn't, you know, like obese or anything. There was nothing I could have did to make my butt how I wanted it to look. I didn't want no squat booty. 
I want it. I want it. I want it. Yeah, I wanted the full package. Like, and my genetics didn't do it for me. So, and working out wasn't gonna do it for me. Like, there's only so much that you can do with working out. And I don't think people understand that. It's not about the fitness of it, sad to say. Um, it's about having the look. It's about being thick. And if you don't have that, you gotta go out and get it. Um, if it's that big of a deal to you. But the confidence that I gained from it, I never had. Like the things that I wear now, I wouldn't have worn back then because it didn't look good to me, you know? And it, it may not have even been as bad as I thought it was. It may not have been as anything wrong with me that that others might have seen that I thought was wrong with me, but it just, it wasn't, I just didn't like my shape. I didn't like my shape and it manifested in so many different ways. But now I go in storage and I try stuff on and I feel happier. Um, I feel more confident. I like I feel sexier. It's easier to come into, you know, womanhood. It was easier to come into womanhood. Um, and then the other side of that is, you know, the reactions that you get from people. Um, so mine looks very natural. So it's not like, oh my God, people stop and stare. Cause I didn't want that. Um, is but, this a skinny BBL? Is that the, the term? I heard that recently. I think skinny BBL is when you don't have fat anywhere else. Like you're like a skinny girl. Mm. And so they really, really have to like etch mm. you out. I just got a natural look. Um, and then believe it or not, like that look where people look like wisdom teeth a little bit. Mm. Like that crazy look. look. <laughs> a lot of women go for that look though. Like mm. a lot of women will show their doctors pictures of that because they want to look. That's called the Vixen look. So a lot of people, you know, video vixen, mm -hmm. stripper look, a lot of people go for that because they want the attention that comes along with it or they want to get into like sex work, OnlyFans, mm -hmm. stripping, stuff like that. So mm 